Good morning, afternoon, or evening. How are you all doing today? Welcome back to Mr. Moore's Geometry class. Today we're going to continue on our knowledgeable journey to perfecting proofs. And we're going to talk about drawing conclusions. And in order to matter geometry, no, in order to master geometry, you can't matter geometry. But in order to master geometry, you must be able to draw conclusions on your own. Okay. Although the following will not work every time, it will be helpful to you in drawing conclusions. There's no one specific rule that I can say, okay, do this always, and you're going to get the proof. It's, that's why I always say, you know, it's not like algebra. In algebra, there's only one way to solve an equation. There's steps, and that's it's always going to be like that, no matter how complicated. Here, it's a little different. So let's go through a little guideline here. Number one. Guys, unfortunately, you've got to memorize your theorems, definitions, and postulates. If at this point you don't know what a midpoint is, that's going to hurt you. If at this point you don't know what a bisector is, that's going to hurt you. If at this point you don't know what the right angle theorem is or the congruent angle theorem is, that's going to hurt you. Okay? If you don't know what complementary angles are or supplementary angles, hopefully I'm making my point. You gotta memorize. You really gotta learn the theorems, definitions, and postulates. Number two, look for keywords and symbols in the given information. Okay? Symbols, especially. Symbols like is it a segment that they're talking about or a ray? Is it a line? Is there a congruent symbol there? Okay? Symbols and in given information, keywords. That's really important to really focus on. Really, really important. Number three, mark your figures. Okay, so far none none of that none of that is new to you guys. So far I've been telling you to do all of this. But now we're really just encapsulating it into a, a, a kind of like a formula. Mark your figures with the given facts. Or draw the situation that you're trying to prove. I'm a big, big believer in marking things. Because that way you can actually see what's going on. And once you see what's going on, once you visualize what's happening, I, I promise you, life gets a lot easier in geometry. And in anything in life, really. Decide which theorem, definition, or postulate allows you to draw conclusions. Again, this is linked to number one. If you don't know your theorems or definitions or postulates, you can't decide which one to use. And last but not least, gentlemen, draw a conclusion and give a reason to justify the conclusion. Be certain that you have not used the reverse of the correct reason. Okay? Now I know there's a lot for you guys to write, so keep writing. I'm just going to go over it again just so it can sink in. Number one, memorize theorems, definitions, and postulates. Number two, look for key words and symbols in the given information. Number three, I think this is one of the most important ones after knowing the definitions. Mark your figures with given facts, or draw the situation you are trying to prove. Number four, decide which theorem, definition, or postulate allows you to draw conclusions. And number five, draw a conclusion and give a reason to justify that conclusion. Be certain that you do not reverse the correct reason. Sometimes in all of these steps, sometimes we do reverse things. It's, it's okay. It happens. It's normal. Try to avoid that at all costs. Okay? Try to avoid that at all costs. Does that make sense, my brothers? Okay. I would like to just stay here for a second, but we do have to move on, guys. I am sorry. If you didn't catch any of this, please just watch the video. Okay. For example... Let's say I tell you, given ray AB bisects CAD, okay? Well, what conclusion can we make from this? Well, immediately, all right, 
I'm going to I'm going to mark my figure. I always do that immediately. Okay? And what conclusions can you make from this? Yes, sir, my brother. Angle CAB is can go into BAD. Yes, that that would work. Very good. Angle Oh, sorry, okay. Angle CAB <laughs> is congruent to BAD. Now, this is a very basic one, but let's go through the thinking process, okay? What do you think the key word is here? Bisects. Absolutely, guys. Bisects is the key word. Again, this goes back to knowing your definition. If you know what bisect means, it means it cuts something in half. So automatically, that cuts angle CAD in half. So boom, CAB has to be congruent to CAD. What's the key symbols here? What are the key symbols here? Yes, sir. The ray and the angle. Very, very good, gentlemen. Very good, gentlemen. Key symbols are that ray symbol and that angle symbol. Mark the given facts on the figure. That's what I do immediately. I, I mean, that's my first thing always. I always mark them. We already marked them. And then I have a double C there. I don't know why. That should be a D. Again, I apologize. And this would be E. Okay. So the definition of the bisector of an angle contains those keys. And an appropriate conclusion is, of course, that CAB is congruent to DAB or BAD, either way. Okay? Now, again, I know what happens. You're like, oh, but this is easy. I would have known that without even thinking about it. False. You knew that because in your brain, you actually went through all of those processes in your head. It's just that when we get to more complicated proofs, you're going to have to actually list these things out. Okay? And if I was going to make a proof out of this, okay, I would state, of course, AB, Ray AB, bisect CAD, because that's given. And then CAB. It's congruent to DAB. Why? Because if a ray bisects an angle, then it divides the angle into two congruent angles. Or definition of angle bisector. I would have totally accepted definition of angle bisector. Totally would have accepted that. I'm not here to kill you guys. But you've got to know the definition, because if you don't know the definition, you're not going to know how to even abbreviate it. Does that make sense, gentlemen? May I continue, gentlemen? Okay, I'll wait for a second. No worries. No worries at all. And this logic makes sense, right? That's what you want to try to do for every single proof. Especially as we get more difficult. Okay? All right, boys. Now, the good news. That's it. That's all we're learning for this lesson. We're just trying to learn how to prove today. So let's do some sample problems. Okay, given. Angle A is a right angle. Angle B is a right angle. Okay? Okay? What will the conclusion be? They're not even asking you to prove something. What, what, the, what will the conclusion be? Yes, sir. Angle A is congruent to angle B. I think that is a very smart. Um, angle A is congruent to angle B, or I could have said, to be more professional, angle BAD is congruent to angle CBA. OK? Now, in, in real proofs, they're going to tell you, you know, prove this. But we're working all here backwards just so you can really, really understand the whole process. And we know the symbols here. You have two angles. You know the right angles. If you know the definition of right angles, you can mark your figure. And you know that A is a right angle and B is a right angle. So if you know what right angles are, you know that they are how many degrees? 90. So I'm going to first say A is a right angle, given. B is a right angle, given. And angle A is congruent to angle B, or angle BAD is congruent to CBA, however you wanted to do that one. And why? 
Yes, you could prove that angle A and angle B equal 90 degrees, but you would be going extra and you would be wasting time because you already know that if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. Right angle theorem. Could that be your conclusion? No. That's more of a definition than a conclusion. Thank you so much, though. The question was, can we have a conclusion that angle A and angle B are 90 degree angles? No. That would be a definition. Very good, though. Very good, uh, good question, sir. Thank you so much. And again, you could abbreviate this, my brothers. You could totally just put right angle theorem. Totally. Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. Perfect. And then again, some people like to go further and just, you know, they just like to write. And they can say after the angle A is a right angle, they may say, oh, angle A, the measure of angle A is 90. And then B is a right angle, the measure of angle B is 90. And then they'll say angle A is congruent to angle B because congruent angle theorem. You could do that as well, but you just added two extra lines. You know, try to keep it simple. Does that make sense, guys? All right. Thank you, brothers. Okay. How about this one? E is the midpoint of SG. What do you think we can conclude from here? Yes, sir. He's saying that segment SE is congruent to segment EG. I think that's a very well thought out conclusion. Absolutely. Why? What would my first statement be, of course? Yeah. E is the midpoint of SG. That's a given. If you know the definition of midpoint, you know that it cuts a segment into two perfect halves. So if it cuts a segment into two perfect halves, then boom, you can immediately say S segment SE is congruent to segment EG because if a midpoint if a point is the midpoint of a segment, the two point the point divides the segment into two congruent segments. Or I could just put definition of midpoint. Now, you may be asking, why aren't you just putting definition of midpoint right from the beginning? Because I'm teaching this lesson again. I'm teaching the definitions. I'm showing you that really knowing the definitions makes things a lot easier. Okay? And don't stress, we just have one more page. And we're golden. I know that you guys are writing. And again, you don't have to write out the whole, if a point is a midpoint of a segment, the point divides a segment into two congruent segments. I'm doing that for teaching purposes, but if you know the definition of a midpoint, well, that, that is the definition of a midpoint. Okay, so you can save time and space and, and mental anguish <laughs> by just doing it like that. Does that make sense, my brothers? Okay, I'll take that as a yes. And let's continue. Last but not least. Okay. Angle PRS is a right angle. Boom, immediately I'm going to just draw that little symbol because that's who I am. I just like to draw on my figures. And then what do you think we can conclude from here, sir? I'm sorry? Yeah, in this case, you have no other choice but to prove the definition. So angle PRS, the measure of PRS is equals... 90 degrees, absolutely. Number one, PRS is a right angle. That's given. And if we know the definition, oh, but yeah, let's think about this. Ah, that conclusion was a little simplistic. I thought for a second, I was like, I don't know. But yeah, what else are we going to prove? But yeah, if we know that it's, that it's a right angle, then yeah, this actually would not have been good. Um, I... I don't think I would have accepted both, actually, because it is 90 degrees, but that's a definition. Like I said, usually your conclusions are very rarely a definition. The definition leads to your conclusion. The conclusion here is if PRS is a right angle, that means that PR is perpendicular to RS because it forms a right angle, which happens to be 90 degrees. And this would be the definition of... Uh, perpendicular lines. If two lines intersect to form a right angle, then they are perpendicular. Or you could just say definition of perpendicular lines. 
So yeah, you see, I gotta believe in myself. Yeah, 90% of the time, guys, you're not gonna ever conclude something with a definition. Now, I'm glad that you thought of that. Go, you gave me a, a weird face. Talk to me. Come again? Okay, yes, you're right. This is a definition of a perpendicular line, yes, but we have very rarely, very rarely ended it with the definition of the given. Right? So that's how I should rephrase that. Very rarely are we going to end a proof with the definition of the given. Good job. Good job, though, son. Very good job. Does that make sense, gentlemen? All right, brothers. Then we're golden, like Colorado. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Hope you learned a lot. Take care.